Hello and welcome to Newspeak, the New Culture Forum's look at the news agenda. Uh, this week, I'm afraid like last week, we are going to be uh, talking about uh, St. Gary of Lineker because this is a crisis which seems to be taking on a very different kind of life, a life of its own indeed. Uh, we're also going to be looking at that maxim, uh, which is basically uh, go woke, go broke. Is that what has happened to the Silicon Valley Bank? Is it because of wokery that's meant that it's gone down the tubes? And finally, uh, this week was the 90th birthday of a genuine screen legend, Sir Michael Caine. So happy birthday, Sir Michael. Uh, we're going to be looking as well, of course, in the week of the Oscars, um, whatever happened to real great movie stars. Um, I am, as usual, with our senior fellows, Rafe Hadelmanku, also royal commentator of BB News and others, and Dr. Philip Kisley, cultural historian at Leeds University. Uh, starting off with this Lineker thing, uh, I should add that um, in the past couple of days now, I believe it's Ian Wright has said that heads must roll, mm. you know, amongst BBC management. Mm. Um, it's just, this is morphing, I feel, into something else, do you think? I think it is. I think it's, it's, it's a row about censorship, it's a row about the role of the BBC, and it, and it, and, and it actually reflects the power that these people have. Yes. I mean, one of the things that was really interesting to me was I was just looking through some, some stuff and it reminded me, Chris Packham, that great intellect, has come out and said, <laughs> it's dreadful that the BBC have censored Gary Lineker. Now, this is the same person who just a few weeks ago mm. was asking, was, was demanding that Jeremy Clarkson should go to jail mm -hmm. go to jail mm -hmm. for, for uh, talking about uh, Meghan Markle. So the insanity of this is just getting crazy. Now, we're, we're recording this um, on the Wednesday. Uh, PMQs has just happened. And Kia Starmer has, has mentioned this in PMQs. This is how stupid it's getting. So yes, you're right. It's about much more than um, a pompous, overpaid, over-the-hill ex-footballer. It's much more than that. Yes, yeah, we can't buy into the this, this story that they're trying to portray that they're standing up for freedom of expression. Yes, it's an, it's an absolute nonsense, mm. you know, as you say. And where, where were they when the teacher in Batley went yeah. into hiding two yeah. years ago this yeah. month? We're marking. What He's about J.K. Rowling? They what don't about say J. K. a Rowling? word about that. What, about, what, about, what about Graham Linehan when he was banned mm. from Twitter? Where were they up in, on Twitter mm. then at mm. that time, mm. speaking for him to be mm. reinstated? Or indeed, you know, one of their own, when, when Dame Jen, uh, Jenny Murray from the formerly of Woman's Hour, when she spoke out in favour of trans radical feminists or against the trans movement, defending women's rights, and she was she was roundly criticised by everybody on the yeah. BBC. Yeah. No one no one came to her defence. Mm. This is much more about a a battle between a cultural elite mm. and the rest of us. Mm -hmm. It's about the desire to impose a set of viewpoints mm. to the exclusion of all others. It's perfectly fine to have freedom of expression in their view mm. as long as you're expounding the right views. Mm. Well, that that's it is in a in a, in a nutshell. I was, did on that monologue uh, exactly that, that this is in fact about institutional consensus mm. the bbc sits right at the very very heart of that yeah but where is it going to go you see i mean this is it this could all i feel go explode in the face of the bbc right maybe it already is well i think it already has done I mean, the, the, the general narrative is about power, isn't it? Now, these people always talk about power, don't they? Who's yeah. got the power? Where's the funding? Mm. And they're trying to represent the BBC as the, as the seat of power here. And that's absolutely not true, is it? Because mm. Gary Lineker, uh, Ian Wright, uh, all, all, all of that little cadre of people, mm. they all have the, the cultural currency and the cultural power to do whatever the hell they want. And that's what they're doing. But that's actually what might destroy it the, yeah, in the end. Yeah. That's the very thing that when people realize it, actually, you know, that, that, you know, heads will roll and all of this kind of stuff.
Yeah. That actually this very um, aggressive language. Exactly, and the sheer weakness institutionally. And can I just can I just make one other point? The, the really interesting thing about this is um, so Lineker, there were there were no pundits on Saturday Saturday night for Match of the Day. Mm. It had the biggest viewing figures they've had for months. Mm -hmm. You know, half a million more, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yes, half a million. Yeah. More. Although on that point, I have to say I, I, I don't really buy into a lot of the, the, that argument because I watched it too, just because there yeah. was nobody on there. Yeah. So there was a lot, a lot of people who would never normally curious watch, to see what it was like. Curiosity. Yeah. I'm not sure that those numbers would be sustained in the yeah. long run. Yeah. Uh, uh, it has to be said. But what I found most interesting of this whole episode was how quick um, the BBC stars and others were to turn on the scabs, on those BBC mm. sports journalists mm. who didn't um, mm. turn down their microphones yeah. and refuse to commentate. And it, they were so quick to find that they were actually vic going to become victims yeah. of cancel culture by the very people who were protesting yeah. the alleged cancelling of, of Gary Lineker. But this has exposed also how completely incompetent the BBC mm. was how they mishandled this. There were, there were easy ways in which you could have slapped Gary Lineker down mm -hmm. and maintained the dignity of the BBC without having it go down this way. Why not actually just suspend him from one or two, ep one or two episodes of Match of the Day mm. rather than just mysteriously saying, mm. oh, he stepped back from the show. Mm. I mean, th th that's a cack-handed approach to have. Why not have other BBC sports journalists who were willing to step up mm actually take over the lead for match of the day there were so many steps at which the bbc could have mitigated the damage that was done but then to cave in at the end in this yeah. way has caused them such such great damage and of course this is now being used as, as an excuse when you hear ian wright and others say heads might roll mm -hmm. whose heads are they talking about mm -hmm. they want the conservative appointed heads to roll yeah. they want to get rid of the director general mm -hmm. they want to get rid of the chairman mm -hmm. this essentially is akin to a knight of the long knives <laughs> it is. this is this is a way to yeah. get rid of the enemies mm. as they see it of progressivism mm. within the BBC and they're going to use every tool they can mm. to make this into a bigger story just to try to have a cleaning out of the right wing elements the few of them that are there within the BBC I think the people supporting them right, might have that as a motive mm. but these kind of uh, commentators I don't think I don't think that there is the nous enough to actually have that I don't think they have a political kind of motive in that way they might be used by all the people around mm. but I, think, I mean really we saying but the very language that is used by people like Gary Lineker shows that he has a just a, a tiny grip on the subject yeah. even you know it's it's much more about basically self-glorification well it is and it's it? all it's also performative radicalism isn't it you know it's 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 performing you know taking mm. on these mm. you know these institutions and these ideologies and 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 they're having so much fun with this because yeah. because there's no there's no consequence for them so gary lineker says something awful about the 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 conservative government they're the easiest target in the world mm. this is this is classic mm. social media mm. posturing isn't it there is there's no there's no price tag for this so even if he gets sacked i mean god knows that's not going to happen but even if he gets so what it's not going to be a massive big deal for him he'll just go to itv and get paid more Can or go imagine? back to al jazeera where he was exactly. very happily getting yes. uh, mm. four hundred thousand pounds a year for four years from a, a, a tv station owned by the Qataris, exactly. whose human rights record is far closer to uh, 1930s Germany yeah. than, the, than our current government is. Can you imagine if he'd said something like, you know, well, we've got borders, we need to defend them, and frankly, mm. you know, they've been a poor... Can you imagine if he'd said something like that? He would have been gone in a day. Yeah. And there's, there is no way that there are, like I say, there are no way there are any consequences for him. The only, the only way there would be consequences if, if, he, if he would say something like that, if he came out as being a big fan of New Culture Forum, you know, he was, he was reading Jordan Peterson, he was listening to Douglas Murray, Peter Hitchens, those kinds of things. Yeah. It's completely and utterly ideological. Actually, this is one example, maybe, of being woke and not going broke. Mm said by way of segue <laughs> into this I find fascinating because it seems to be going under the radar slightly but this issue we've had this week of the collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank mm. I was not even aware we we had a Silicon Valley Bank no apparently we have but um, some people are saying this is because of the woke views that it espoused it was much more um, concerned with diversity and, and mm. social justice issues 
Do you think that's true? Well, I don't think we should both think that a proportion, but I, I think there's absolutely a core element of mm. truth there, which was that you have, you have uh, risk <coughs> managers, people who are supposed mm. to be looking out for these sorts of issues, who are clearly more interested in meeting diversity quotas, mm. in pushing an LGBTQ agenda, in ensuring that net, net, net carbon rates are, are met mm. by, by, I think, 2025, they wanted to meet them. So their eye has been taken off of the ball. Mm. Mm. And it's also, uh, I mean, you've had the head of Home Depot in America raising this very issue with this bank particularly, and saying that the wrong people have been hired as well. Mm. When you're hiring not the best candidate for the mm. job, mm. but you're hiring the, the person that you want to be seen to be in that position, mm then you have to ask whether actually that person is actually best suited to fulfill the functions of that role. And it's not just with this bank, but, it, but in the terms of this bank, you, you're seeing it in terms of um, bad decisions were made about interest rates, mm. about the types of product they were investing in, about the government bonds that they were choosing. Mm. There are a whole lot of areas where you would think, well, somebody whose focus was primarily and exclusively mm. on their actual role wouldn't have made such basic mistakes, not basic to us maybe, but when mm. you're in that role, mm. you understand that. And the criticism that they've received from other experts lends you to think, actually, these chaps weren't actually focused on it. But they, there's this broader idea of work, cap work capitalism too, which affects these companies' profitability and success and leaves them open to this situation where they are no longer being expected to have their shareholder as their main responsibility. Up mm. until now, a company's fiduciary duty was to the shareholder, mm -hmm. but now it's to put society <laughs> ahead of the shareholders mm. and once once you start look, in, uh, looking elsewhere beyond your company and actually thinking about the environment rather than your shareholders mm. then naturally you're going to start undermine the very foundations of your organization yeah i mean it's, it's a classic example of putting people first and not projects isn't it it's, mm. it's you know and the the function of a bank is to make money and and, and if you're th if you're thinking about value rather than the, the it's it's the same thing it's it's a replica it, it replicates the same thing that's going right through the institutions this idea of obsession about values other than what they're actually supposed to do so when it comes to hard cash it might be a, a, a real wake-up call you know yeah. it, it might reverberate right across the institutions mm. now I'm probably being you know I'm probably over the top there and it probably won't so much but it might make people stop and think a little bit I'm not completely convinced by this uh, go work, go broke thing. I, I, I don't know because what I see happening is a quite, you know, a sort of like a, a natural uh, parting of different companies and different along political lines. Mm. So essentially that we will make our consumerist choices in the end by whom we agree with. So mm. for example, take the obvious example, Ben and Jerry. Say, mm. right? Um, you know, they, you know, I find them just, I, I can't believe some of the stuff they come out with. Mm. Um, it ha I have stopped eating their ice cream, right? Um, okay, so, so I've done that, but most people haven't. Mm. Do they care enough? I mean, you know, does it, is it really, well, the, is the, it really about going broke? I, th I think that's, I think you're right there. I, th I think you've, you've, you've hit on a, a trend that is happening. It's not just woke radical leftists who are making these kinds of choices you've mm. just said that you're making that kind of choice mm. after the the debacle with the spectator uh, and andrew neil i stopped using the co-op or i don't use it I, very occasionally i'll use it because it's just around the mm. corner but i stopped doing that i don't well i've got i've got a beard now but i do shave underneath i don't use gillette but do you know what i mean mm. i'm i'm being dragged you're not you're not you you are not typical I mean, here we are, we're sitting on a show talking about this. Yeah. I'm talking about the majority of people. I'm not saying, by the way, that they're, they're unaware of the issues at all. Mm. I think that they sort of make some kind of uh, judgment. Oh, no, you're right. So get, Go Work, Go Brand doesn't apply to a lot of it, uh, c companies that are involved with consumer consumption. Mm -hmm. Because where the consumer is making a decision to, mm. to buy Ben & Jerry's or to watch Disney Plus mm. or to watch you know, Netflix and other programs like that, yeah, there's a market there. Uh, and certainly people will choose. So there'll be those that cater to the left, those that cater to the right. That's a different thing, I think, from actually um, taking your eye off the ball on sound fundamental financial mm. decisions in mm. a bank, mm. whereby your woke agenda is distracting you from the core business mm. which you're supposed to be building. That's where go woke, go broke 
actually yeah. can do damage rather from, than on the consumption. But, the, but on the terms of the consumption, I think what often is the case now is a lot of companies, rather than enacting real reform to improve the lives of their workers, yeah. uh, they're actually just doing the superficial mm. cosmetic yeah. changes. Oh, look, we've got, we've got three gays and a, and a black woman on our board of directors. Or look, all of our commercials feature minorities. Mm. You won't find a white man on our adverts. Meanwhile, everyone's getting paid minimum wage mm. and we've got sweatshops mm. yeah. <laughs> in Sri Lanka. And, also, and there's performative mm. superficiality. Yeah. To, see, by, to be seen to be doing the right things yeah. without any meaningfully, uh, meaningfully reform. Can, can I just come back to that, that, that point, Peter? I, I think you're right, and I am in a minority, and you're in a minority, mm. because we're heavily invested in this. But I'm not just talking about now, I'm talking about a trend, right? Mm. So 10, 15 years ago, you never would have thought that people would buy eco-washing up liquid that really just does not work. Now, lots of people do and eco washing powder and all of those mm -hmm. things so these broad grand narratives about the environment about um about sustainability uh, about equality about diversity they are going to have much more of an impact and the, the the people who engage with those things on a consumer level there is going to be more of a reaction against that i think well it's possibly i mean it was explained to me by someone who was in advertising uh, you know, for example, take you know you mentioned the um, disproportionate amount of ethnic um, uh, minorities in advertisements. Mm. Companies are not stupid; they make the basic uh, uh, judgment that, in fact, they have got this huge section of people here, mm. and uh, who might occasionally grumble about the way they present themselves. Mm. But basically, they are after these different groups or whatever, mm. or they're indeed after some good window dressings, you say. Mm. But essentially, it's like, we don't, you know, they're gonna come to us. So when John Lewis, or when, um, which I think you've been talking about, haven't you, John Lewis? John Lewis, or, or Sainsbury's, or any of these pe people do these outrageously surreal Christmas ads now, mm. Mm. it's not stopping me even going. John mm. Lewis. It's just not. Mm. But that's at the moment. It it, you know, it might get so extreme in the future mm. that, and in the not too distant future either. You know, look how quickly things have changed. Mm. Like it it might well be that we're so polarised as a society, even in five years' time, that you won't be shopping at John Lewis. Actually, you know, there was a good example uh, quite recently uh, of of that. Mm. Um, I think and I can't remember the name of the bank. It was a financial institution where the guy, the, the Twitter manager, obviously, the social media manager of this, of this um, bank, I think, got on, got on to Twitter and said, well, if those are your values to someone who was complaining about something, That's right, then yeah. frankly, we don't want your yeah. business. Now, the thing is, is that... I Taking lessons that, from the police force. Well, exactly, from the police Twitter. yeah, we don't want, yes, exactly, we don't want to protect you in yeah. that case. Yes. <laughs> uh, basically, the, these people, um, the, uh, the top brass of a company, usually are basically probably quite conservative, this is huge power in social media departments and for that matter, as we all know, in HR departments. Well, I think that leads into an actually a more sinister sort of um, discussion about the future when you think about things like China's social credit system. Mm. And we already know we have the experience in yeah. Canada where the government yeah. stopped the bank account, froze the bank accounts of the trucker convoy that was in Ottawa protesting over, over COVID lockdown and so forth. It's actually, if we do get in the near future these credit score type um, rankings as a person mm. on whether we have on-site views or not. Um, will companies decide not to actually uh, uh, seek our business or allow us to, to do business with them? Mm. You know, it's already getting very difficult for political parties in this mm. country, for new political parties to get a bank account. They will very, be denied a bank uh, account. Uh, uh, uh. Now, will we see that expanded to people who have posted views mm. that disagree with the, 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 current, the current mantra going around co the work corporations? Well, it is the logical extension isn't it? It is the logical extension. And if you have, you know, views, we know, and, and I can say this from personal experience, if, if you have views which are contrary to the, to the accepted norms in a, in a particular institution, and those accepted norms now are radically left wing, then you do have problems. I mean, you can see it with, say, for example, the famous case of the bakeries that refuse yeah. to make cakes, for example. Yeah. You can easily see how a bank would refuse to give them a loan in the future yeah. on, on those sorts of things. I think, yeah. I, I suppose my point is that the, the future is nearer than we think. Yeah. Yeah. But you sort of take something like, you talk about uh, cakes. Um, isn't it the case that, for example, most of the meat we now get in supermarkets is halal? Mm. No, I mean the fact is, I would have thought we're pretty much against halal for 
feeders in this country. You know, we're absolutely, you know, the top of the league when it comes to animal safety and care, mm. not to, to the point of sentimentality almost. And yet here we are going along with this. Mm. Isn't, isn't this the case? Yes, well, shops, shops, shops like Subway, for example, where you can get sandwiches, mm. they, you, you can't get um, mm. pork products yeah. in there at all. All of their ham is turkey ham, yeah. for example. Mm. Same thing in, some, in certain schools. Mm. Now in Denmark, they've made a, a point of this where they deliberately have pork, you know, because Danish bacon is obviously a core part of the yeah. culture. And they, ins they insist that you have pork sausages and everything yeah. available there. And they've made rules require, requiring this to be served in schools. Yeah. Whereas here we've buckled down. I, if I had children, I wouldn't want them to basically be going to a school eating halal meat. Mm. It's outrageous. Mm. Mm. But in fact, yes, so, so th th that exists. So basically, uh, would you agree with my original point that in fact the, pe the power of boycott amongst the people who consume stuff is great and indeed is uh, they're not conscious of it? Mm. I mean, essentially, that's I yeah. feel. Yeah, if I, only they knew, basically. Yeah. Well, people should know, you mm. know, you could start, if you all stopped, you know, I don't know, going to John Lewis or wherever it might be mm. because of something or Marks and Spencers, it would be a bit like sort of stopping watching a program mm. and the ratings going down. People have this power, but they don't seem to see it. And the problem is, <coughs> well, yeah, they don't seem to see it. And for, some, for whatever reason, the, the, the great majority, the great silent majority don't actually get themselves actively involved in these things yeah. and so it's a silent it's, a, it's the, the loud minority mm -hmm. who do this you see this with the uh, hope not hate campaign right mm -hmm. gb news has as we've just been reported has had a 30 million pound loss mm -hmm. why because they can't get advertising why because this group of hope not hate advertises all of the companies mm -hmm. that are advertising on gb news and a boycott is enacted now why can't we with a far with a far bigger uh, section of the population do something similar yeah, for, yeah. for whatever reason yeah. we aren't motivated mm. in the same way but it's all, I mean it's always the, the case are. with I suppose you know with people like us and I, and I always say we we've, we've got to get involved we've got to read the small print we've got to mm. we've got mm. to know what's going on in schools mm. we've got to know what's going on uh, you know in, in 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 the broader culture and people just tend to think tend to fall back on this thing don't they where they say oh it's political correctness gone mad oh it's yeah it's a it's mm. a, a, a we know that's not yeah. the case now. We know that this is the norm. And the small c mentality is is to not actually, the small c conservative mentality, I should say, is to not make a fuss. We're not the kinds of people who go out chanting and marching. It's an absolute anathema yeah. to yeah. us. Mm -hmm. So what we've really got to do is to meet these people kind of on their own terms we yeah. do have to make a fuss we do have to make a stand and we do have to boycott mm, mm. because they know you know a minority knows that if they make enough fuss and they make enough they own twitter they own the online space they know that if they do that they get what the hell they want so all we have to do is look at them and see what they're doing yeah i mean it's a bit like uh what well, to go back to the bbc yeah. uh basically people were suddenly they less it with not paying this license mm. fee but there's not quite enough mm. anger. Mm. It's just poll after poll shows that there's a lot of goodwill still towards mm. BBC. We always have to remain aware of that when we argue these I, things. And again, it makes you wonder what what would make people what possibly would make people turn and what po where is the point How where far, people yes. would say look enough's enough we've got you know gary lineker in pmqs today isn't that enough isn't that ridiculous isn't that stupid shouldn't people say well actually maybe that's the point where i stop paying my tv license maybe that's the point where i think about how can I get my entertainment elsewhere? What what does it mean for me? At least look into it. Well, no, you, you think you just have to think back to the Countryside Alliance march against mm -hmm. against the ban on fox hunting to yeah. see how you managed mm -hmm. to get a huge portion of the population uh, uh, animated and engaged with this and the huge mm -hmm. march through London. Now, fox hunting, you know, is an, an issue you can have a view on, but surely the things that we're talking about are of great, far greater consequence mm -hmm. to our civilization. And why can't we actually get that same sort mm -hmm. of passion about that? And, and, yeah. and the fact that it's quite simply some rules for some and other rules for, for other people and the dissonance is just insane it's the kind of queers for palestine mentality isn't it you know yeah when it comes to things like these corporations and everything i know we have just discussed this on this show before but it came up again was talking to people this week um i think if you just look at it from another angle when it comes to young people going into the workplace they 
they always went towards corporations. You know, they're, they're the ones who went on the, you know, the, what do you call it, the kind of jobs round at Freshers Week or whatever yeah. it is. Um, I think that, you know, if younger people care about these issues the way we do, and there are, and they certainly, there are some of them, mm. um, they should not go near these places for work. You know, I, I, I said about university, remember mm. a, a while ago, and said that, you know, young men particularly, should give it a miss because mm. they're going to be lives are going to be made. They're going to be seen as the you know originators of of sin, mm. uh, essentially. Uh, and I think it's the same with the workforce. Yeah, just go and do something, anything that doesn't require you to have a corporate boss. Mm. Well, maybe I mean maybe that's happening anyway. It's certainly happening in the university. Mm. You know, the British students, quite simply, are certainly in the arts, humanities, hard... social sciences, they're not represented in the way that they used to be. So you've got to think well. Where are they? Mm. But it's know. a hard decision for someone to actually put their principles before their economic security. Mm. And yeah. if you can get a job mm. within a blue chip c corporation mm. where you've got your health care, your dental care, and uh, some sort of a pension scheme going on, mm. uh, and you know the the, the, um, the, the, the the social status you get from a lot of these positions, mm. it's a, it's a, it's a difficult thing. It but is a difficult thing, but there is also set against that that. You know econ that economic imperative there's also the freedom that you have for working for yourself oh yeah you know so which, which i think which people really do think about now uh, in a way that they didn't before so the, the idea of the entrepreneurial is much more attractive to people i think yeah i think it's uh, i think uh, douglas murray once said you know that if if you if you are self-employed or if you're not beholden to anyone in the kind of employment sense you almost have a kind of duty to sort of speak out yeah. uh, on, on these issues. Um, just before we go on to something else, where do you think, do you think this shows this Silicon Valley bank thing? Is it like Lehman Brothers? Is it, no. You know, it's, it's, some people have been saying, there's one guy who's a particular analyst, who said, well, this, you know, I, have, I, I predicted what would happen after Lehman Brothers. No, it was nothing like Lehman Brothers. I was actually working, talking about working in work corporations. I was working at Deutsche Bank when Lehman Brothers <laughs> collapsed. And uh, I found it fascinating. You know, it was like being in Wall Street in 29. Mm. For me, everyone, everybody around me was, was destroyed. I was actually fascinated by that yes. period. This isn't like that because the, 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 the governments of the world that were involved in the financial crisis have ensured that the stress testing that banks go through mm. is a lot more rigorous and there are schemes in place. So you saw the way that this Silicon Valley Bank was, um, was, was protected and brought out by HSBC here mm. and protected in America. We have a much more resilient financial system now. Now, that's not to say that you're not going to be, have another Lehman Brothers in the future, but Silicon Valley Bank is, is, is not nowhere near on the same sort of level or scale or, and it shouldn't concern anybody. You said you, it was brought out by HSBC? Well, the UK part of it, yeah. Right, well, actually, that's a very good point. They not so much woke, mm. but don't you remember HSBC's outrageous ads saying we are not just an island? Do you remember That's that? That's right. It's yeah. around the time of Brexit. It was around the time of Brexit, uh, and wasn't essentially it? it was. Uh, we are. You know, you might like to think you are, but you're really not. You know, infuriating. Mm. You know, uh, absolutely infuriating. Um, the bank would like to say yes originally, but, <laughs> exactly. but not, not for the Brexit referendum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it was Midland Bank. But the. Um, <laughs> Obviously, another area which is is where this actually applies, this argument, go woke, uh, go broke, is Hollywood and yeah. movies. Um, uh, it really is. Mm -hmm. And and again, it's a very mixed picture, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, because people say, oh, well, this proves, you know, that Charlie's Angels, all female Charlie's Angels, oh, it's terrible. Well, it might just have been a terrible film, you know. Uh, I watch stuff on, I'm not trying to, try, you know, I'm just, I, I think this is a really, you know, you've got to face facts. I watch a hell of a lot of stuff on on Elm Netflix, for example. Usually, kind of woke. Does it mean when Netflix share price goes right down as it did, was that really about wokeness? Do you think, or was it just because people had it during the pandemic and then thought, oh, actually, we've we've had enough of that now? Yeah, well, that, I think that was the reason. But what I find interesting is that I don't think, no matter how poorly woke productions um, do financially. They still seem to keep coming out with them. It's almost as if mm -hmm. that, 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 yes. the, fin the financial results don't actually dictate uh, wh wh whether a trend will continue or not. Now, if I watch things on Netflix and on Prime Video, I go to a website called Rotten Tomatoes, mm. where you get mm. two views. You get the critics' aggregate ranking, and then mm. you get home viewers' aggregate ranking. Mm. And if you go to any of these things, like the female Ghostbusters or Charlie's Angels or the Black Wakananda, whatever it is, Marvel thing with black women in it, 
you'll look at the actual critics rating and it'll be 95% yeah. and then you'll go look at the home <laughs> viewers rating it was it'll rubbish 58% <laughs> and it's, it's amazing how when it comes to work productions you get that huge disparity mm. and I'm just constantly amazed at how despite that that they keep churning out more and more of the stuff when clearly the audience are, are reacting against it well they are <laughs> in award shows we had the Oscars this week mm. and uh, in award, award shows uh, audiences have generally been just in free fall. Uh, having said that, the Oscars went up a little bit this year, but I mean, it had an audience of 18 million. Uh, whereas I think last year's or the year before, the year before was their worst ever, mm -hmm. right? Down to about 16, something like that. But I grew up at a time, not that long ago, actually, the 90s, where it was like 40, 50 million. Oh, at least. You know. I mean, you know, and if you go back further, you've got television shows that, mm. uh, you know, the Christmas EastEnders got nearly, what, yes. 26, yes. 27 million. Uh, Morecambe and Wise would routinely get far more than 18 million, you but, know. But I think, yes. And that's just in the UK. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the whole thing is fragmented mm. in terms of technology. But with these award shows, they are absolutely a platform for general kind of left-wing workery and all the rest of it. Mm. And that, I think, I, for example, switch off. I used to watch Oscars and everything. I couldn't bear it now. I couldn't mm. bear it. Um, it's, I it's couldn't sickening. bear to listen to it. It, it really is sickening, the, you know, the, the, the stuff they come out with. But how it's, how it's um, reported as well, there's this, this year in particular, the, the, the woman who was the star of the, the film that, that won the Oscar, she was reported as identifying as Asian. How, how, do, you, how do you identify as Asian? I, I don't know. <clears throat> yes, um, yes. And then they, they said, oh, well, Merle Oberon, uh, Oberon was, uh, was nominated once in 1930, you know, 1900 and Chopfish. And, uh, and she didn't say that she was, she, she was uh, Anglo -Indian, Asian probably. heritage. But, but uh, this woman is coming right out and saying it. You know, yeah. it's just it's just absurd. Speaking of, so I'm not going to let you off the hook here. You you said uh, the film that won the Oscar this year. What was the name of it? I can't remember. I did no, so it's a long title. I saw it. I actually saw the film. Oh, you actually yeah, saw the yeah, film. Yeah, yeah, I saw the film. And yeah. you can't even remember the title. No, it's, it's a very long. I can't remember what I had for breakfast. Everywhere, <laughs> somewhere, <laughs> everything all at once, or yeah, something yeah, like that. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like title off-putting to mm -hmm. me, right? Um, but <clears throat> it's interesting is that, you know, okay, it's a long title. Okay, I'll give you that. But I mean, essentially, people don't remember the films because the films are not worth remembering. Yeah, yeah. And well, the films, I are, mean, the, the, actually, it's not even that. The films are not worth seeing. Mm. That's, the, that's the key thing. If, I, if I'd seen it, I'd, I'd probably remember it. But mm. I, I, I just wouldn't dream of going to the, going to the movies. I mean, that, actually, the last, when was the last time the last time do you know the last time i physically went to the to the movies to see a was film to see the courier was it with benedict Cumberbatch? that that was but we i, I did that as a as a work thing the work last thing. time i chose this is incredible and maybe there's been another time but i can't think sideways in 2003 Really? Oh, the one about the guys who go on a drinking. Which uh, was actually uh, genuinely funny. Yes. It had two heterosexual yeah. white men in it, able-bodied white men, uh, and it and, it, and it was it was a hoot. It's a fantastic film if you've never seen it sideways. You, that wouldn't get made now. But I think there's a whole variety of things going on here. So people don't watch the Oscars and so forth because you're quite right because of the virtue signalling and 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 the performative art of accepting an award now with the crocodile tears. But also there are no movie stars left mm. in the way that there used to be. Mm. And so you used to watch to see David Niven, mm. to see Gregory Peck, to see Jack Nicholson or Robert De Niro, you know, that, that's why you watch to see these characters come out. Now people don't actually know who are the cast of these mm. movies because they're not, because you don't actually watch movies now no. for the stars because there are no stars in them. Mm. There are too many being made for a start. Yeah. You're watching because it's the Marvel franchise or you're watching because it's Star Wars. And so you, you've ceased to have the, the box office draw yeah. that you used to have. The people that we think of as the being the, the big movie stars of today are actually people who are in their 60s and 50s. Yeah. No, there's nobody well, in, their, of, in their 30s actually, that you would say is a movie star. Actually, talking mm. of which, in a sane world, which film should have won the Oscar for Best Picture? It should have been Top Gun Maverick, shouldn't it? Because it was by far, in a way, the biggest film of the year. It well, was biggest commercially. Best of, uh, yeah, commercially, commercially, but I'm not sure whether it was the best film. Well, it was a, it was a great no, but film. At least we can remember yeah. what it's called. Oh, yeah. you know the, point <laughs> is, the point is, actually, that Tom Cruise, uh, bless him, actually, uh, keeps the whole bloody industry Going. alive yeah. simply because he doesn't make television. Mm. He's not made any television. I mean, now, 
regularly movie stars go into these kind of quite high, you know, mm. production mm. Netflix features. Um, he just doesn't in a way that they often didn't because TV was always seen as the poor, the poor uh, relative. But and that's I, the funny thing because before it was a big thing to make the leap from yeah, television yeah, to yeah, the yeah, movies. Yeah, yeah. And now that was amazing. someone like Harrison Ford, you know, grade A mm. movie star, now going into Netflix. Mm. This is the transformation, and this is also why I think movies are on the decline and why no one's cared because just as much stuff is being produced for streaming yeah. as you would see in the big screen. And in terms and of, and that in are terms of production big, values, it's just as good yeah. as well. And also, things that are meant for the big yeah. screen end up yeah. on, on streaming within a few days now, yeah. quite often. But also, it's a circ I think it's a, uh, the psychological is a, it's a difference in the way that we look at these people now. And they don't endear themselves to us, you know, and stars used to endear themselves mm. to the public mm. and the other thing I think is can't you can't you really can't uh, underestimate people used to see it on a massive screen right that lends an extraordinary glamour anyway mm. regardless of how beautiful the people are now they're smaller than you mm. Mm. they're smaller than you they're disposable but right the, well, there's, they're there's all something here. there's something again and and I think we were talking about this with with Claire Fox because we we all watched that film the courier didn't yes. we? yes and I realised how much I missed going to the going to the cinema, sitting in the dark with other people I didn't know, watching mm. this massive big screen away from phones and, and, and other distractions and just being taken into another world. Mm. I used to love doing that because I used to love the other world. Now I can't stand the other world and I wouldn't I wouldn't want to go there well, at Scorsese all. Well Scorsese said this about the, his film The Irishman yeah. for example, yeah. mm. a film he meant made for the big screen yeah. and he was lamenting the fact that people are watching this on, on, on their tiny, tiny phones mm. yeah. using the cinematic effect. But the other thing to say here is that movie stars have been in, in decline for actually close to a hundred years. Yeah. You know, I was watching some of Michael Parkinson's uh, old interviews from the 70s. Mm. And in the 70s, he was lamenting the fact that there were no, there were, there were no movie stars. Yeah. But of course, you have to remember, before the movies, you had opera stars, Caruso and yeah. so forth, who were the great international figures. But no movie stars have ever been able to eclipse Mary Pickford or Valentino yeah. when there was no other alternative apart from watching the silver screen. And even when he was talking to movie stars at the time, I remember he talked to Richard Burton. You know, it was right towards the end of Richard Burton's career. And so they were, you know, they were very much looking backwards. Uh, and when he had uh, Jimmy Cagney and Pat O'Brien on there, you know, they were about 150 and falling asleep in the chairs, you know. Mm. So, yeah, you, you really did, even at that time, even in the early 70s, you really got a sense that the... But even the, in the 60s, I mean, it really, it was the arrival of, of rock and roll yeah. that took the attention away from the movie stars. Mm. And now, of course, then television came, which mm. further took the attention away. And now we've got streaming platforms and YouTube. Yeah. And, and so and I just, think that there's yet, been a natural erosion of, in, their, of their foundations. And just in, just in terms of stats, the high point, the high watermark for, for movies was 1946. Yes. In downhill. It was that. 46 until early 50s, I yeah. believe. Yeah. And that's when I think something like attendances in this country were over a billion. Mm. That's attendances, mm. you know, like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, the low point uh, was 1984 when it was 56 million. Mm. And then it started to climb again. Mm. So the thing is, that what I would say is, it's, you know, be careful of received wisdom mm. because. They really did write movies off in the 80s because of video. Yeah. And then suddenly all these multiplexes came along. Mm -hmm. The same sort of thing could happen. But I agree, the actual relationship is entirely changed. I wouldn't go so far back as you actually were, for instance, that I think even up to the 90s and people like George Clooney, Julia Roberts, they had a pattern of stardom about them. Mm. But, oh, absolutely. And so, yeah. and so did Tom oh, no, Cruise and Brad Pitt and yeah. Johnny Depp and, yeah. and all of those yeah. stars. Yeah. They, for me, they were the last the last generation that had that that something they were they were you know they, they had a, a, a pattern of stardom as you say but nothing comes quite close as my point to the 1920s and yeah. 30s mm. um everything has been going downhill since then but mm. certainly yeah the 1990s generation who are now in their 50s and 60s mm. they are the last of the great movie star mm. generation look at era. look at the you know what they do now which is just a pure publicity thing they they put about 10 movies in the best picture category Mm. Right, that's to help the industry along. Yeah, obviously, but it used to be about five or six. Yeah, <clears throat> look back to nineteen seventy-two, seventy-three, and look back to nineteen thirty-nine, and look at the best picture nominees, just the nominees, and you've got things like in this first case, The Godfather, 
Cabaret, The French Connection, mm. all these great movies mm. from that time. 1939, you know, Gone with the Wind, yeah. The Wizard of Oz, A Few Good Men. You know, it just, what have we got now? You know, what mm. we, we can't even remember what won this year. Mm. You know? and, 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 but that, that, that time, that early 70s time, that New Hollywood time, that Easy Riders, Raging Bulls time, yeah. I think that was the, the last great... You know, all we all we have now is essentially kind of superhero characters. That's what mm. films have become now. They're almost like a, a version of computer games, aren't they? Mm. Where mainstream films, big films like Chinatown and, and mm. Shampoo and all of those mm. films, mm. Uh, they had an artistry about them, mm. which mm. was just sensational. Well, they meant something. They, they, and they meant they something. They were culturally they were resonant. They're yeah. not the movies are not culturally mm. resonant. Anymore. And then it's Sir Michael Cave's 90th birthday, yes. and of course, Zulu has come under attack. And, yeah. Yeah. and he, yes. he, he gave a ma marvellous riposte yes. to being told that it was racism, yes. and said it was BS. But yes, exactly. In more clear yes. terms yes. than that. <laughs> exactly. But he said, actually, on a closing note here, he said, um, he said uh, I don't know who they are now. I mean, it's very easy, isn't it, for people to say, oh, it's because you're getting old. Mm. No, the nature of, tra of fame has changed. Oh, it really has I changed. Think it has. Yeah. So you can you're not famous for the same reason. No, so exactly. That's obvious in, from from the from the Oscar ceremony, isn't it? But I mean, I can see a kind of big opening here. Who was your favourite movie star? I mean, when was the last time you went to a movie? I really would love to hear this. I mm. think we all would actually. Mm. Um, anyway, happy birthday to Michael. Yeah. If you happen to be watching, I know you're a fan. <laughs> um, thank you, Rafe. Uh, thank you, Philip. That's it for uh, Newspeak this week. We shall see you next time. Take care. Hello. If you're enjoying the New Culture Forum channel and you believe in our mission, may I invite you to join our membership scheme at the link below or on our website, newcultureforum.org.uk. Our work is more important now than ever, and we have great plans ahead for the future, but we can't do it without your support. From as little as three pounds per month, you can help ensure that we continue on our mission. As a member, you'll receive a range of benefits, including access to exclusive content, invitations to our private events, including here at our studios, free copies of our books, and much, much more, including, of course, our famous NCF mug. If you aren't able to become a member, then please help us by clicking this button and subscribing to our channel. It's completely free. Just remember to also click the bell icon so that you can get notifications when we post new videos. Thank you.